Good evening. Welcome to the January 25th Board of Selectors meeting. The meeting is being audio and video recorded. If you would please stand and join us the Pledge of the Flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome to the January 25th Board of Selectors meeting. The meeting is being audio and video recorded. If you would please stand and join us the Pledge of the Flag. The first item on the agenda is to vote to appoint Paul Mulcahy to the Cultural Council. So he is working. He was unable to make it tonight, but there's a recommendation from the Cultural Council. They need someone. Um, and just as an FYI, he is the owner of the boss of the beer works company that actually made that 200 beer for our, our anniversary, which I thought was pretty neat. So, um, but he unfortunately had to work tonight, could not be here. Okay. Thanks, David. Is there a motion to? Um, appoint Paul to the Cultural Council. So Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, is there a motion to accept the meeting minutes of December 7th for review? And um, I would ask that the board table those into the next meeting. Okay. Is there a motion to table? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And approve the meeting minutes of November 15th. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, is there a motion to release the executive session minutes of August 5th, October 21st, and November 18th, 2020. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, we have annual town meeting coming up in May. Um, it's the proposed date is May 8th, 2023 at the high school auditorium. Um, we also need a time, right? Yes. Um, six. We've been doing six the last couple of times. That seems to work pretty well. So, but whatever time you want to use, um, I would just ask you to make that as part of your motion. Okay. Can uh, I ask a question about the start time? It seems like we've been starting earlier and earlier. Is there a procession first with like the Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts yeah, so and then start we start? Before. We can't start the actual meeting until the right at 6 o'clock. So if we plan, I don't know if people want to get there early to see their kids. I don't know. I've just been part of it when the little kids are part of the Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts and we think it starts at six when those processions had already happened. So what we did was a handful of years ago, actually it was Neil Connolly who made the request, but um, he was saying, you know, he goes, maybe we should try to start things earlier so that way people with younger children would be able to come. And then it was Denise who said we should do a survey. So we actually did a survey and we collected like 400 responses and six o'clock is what was the majority. It was May, th there was four questions, six or seven, May or June. Mm -hmm. And May at 6 p.m. had the most amount of votes. It was close, but that was the, that's since then, um, so it was really since 2020, we went to 6 o'clock. I but agree with the 6 o'clock. Yeah. It's just making sure that we don't start before that so that the Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts and Pledge yeah. of Yeah, Mary's talking about the things we do before the actual meeting so starts, how we start like 15 minutes ahead and do the pledge and that's National correct. Anthem and that stuff. Okay, I'm following. So yes, yeah, so you're going to vote for when the actual meeting starts, but all of the pomp and circumstance <coughs> starts prior to that meeting. So it'll start at 5.40 or 5.45. All right, I think we need to communicate that um, a little bit more for the younger. Okay. And maybe say oh, something like some ceremonies will occur from 5.45 to to six or yeah. whatever it is. Whatever the time set and then official town meeting starts at this time. Thank you. Okay, so is there a motion for May 8th at 6 p.m.? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And is there a motion to open the town meeting warrant? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, David, what are you proposing for a closing date? March 24th at 12 noon, which is a Friday, so that gives everybody two months in order to get their stuff in. Okay, is there a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Um, we're going to move to the Board of Health. <coughs> want to stay here, Mr. Chairman, or want to come to the table? Why don't you come up? I'm with me. <laughs> and Mr. Chairman, they actually have two budgets, 1950 wastewater and that 5110 Board of Health. All right. Um, we'll start with wastewater, 1950. want to run through it quickly, noting any changes. Um, as you can see, it's, uh, okay, what am I 
Okay. Uh, we're on uh, 18, fifth, no, I'm sorry, 15. Yeah, you do the talking. <laughs> so, <coughs> FY24, we're requesting the same amount, $15,375. Same amount that we have appropriated for FY23. There's no change in that, uh, that budget. Perfect. Um, any questions or comments? No, nope, it looks like the spending year to date looks good. So I don't have any questions. All right, we're going to move to the next. Next. So the Board of Health line item um, for FY24, it's a, it's, a budget, it's a reduction because we are, our secretary uh, retired last July. So her rate was a higher rate. So we have a, a new hire <coughs> uh, coming in at a lower rate. So therefore, that's why there's a almost $16,000 reduction in our FY24 budget due to main, mainly staffing. Everything else basically is staying the same. <coughs> Nursing clinics, labs, engineering, <coughs> uh, elected officials, um, a health agent protest. It was a two percent cost of living increase in that salary line item. Mm -hmm. How's the nursing program going? Good. Found good. a few years ago, and yep, it's going good. Yeah, okay. yeah April. April's doing a great job. The people, at the council on aging, really like her, um, and she's going to be going back to office hours at the council starting next month. Awesome. Yes, back the to people. normal. Back to, back to normal, yes. Great. And I just want the board to know as well that, as you know, we did a consolidation of all of our inspectional services into one. <coughs> so right now, some of these budgets will reflect the secretary in it, like the Board of Health does. But at the end, when I make a budget presentation to you, is that we will be moving that line under the planner position. Um, and that way, all, as, as was voted, all of those secretaries will be in one line in that one other budget. But just get an FYI to the board. Any um, questions or comments for Rob and John? No. No, looks good. Thank you. Beautiful. Sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Have a good one. <laughs> Thank you. Scott. Hello. Hi. Hey, Scott. How are you? Pretty good. So we'll start off with the treasurer collector budget, fourteen fifty. Top line for appointed official is my salary. That's just two percent of my contract. The fiscal clerk has a big raise in it. I'm putting Allison in for a reclassification. You guys should be receiving that paperwork soon. Um, so this budget reflects what it would be if she received the reclassification, along with a step raise from step four to step five, which happens year over year, uh, to step five. The 51, 18, and 19 are Jean and Maureen's positions, and they have the 2% uh, SPIA union raise. Uh, the next increase would be 5303 in data processing. That is money that goes to our payroll company. Um, they also do the printing of our bills. Uh, if you see fiscal year 22, we had gone over 18,000. Um, I think it's about the same this year, but I just wanted to have it covered mostly for material increases in printing. Um, and some of the postage there. And then 53.45 is the postage line, um, requesting a $750 increase, which is 6%, which is how much the stamps just went up this past week. Makes sense. Any questions? Well, we still have a lot of postage. A lot of things go electronically as well. Well, no, not all as the bills, much. you get notices from them, but we still have to mail them out to everybody. Oh, wow. So every, yeah, every bill gets all the excise bills and oh, that's right. 15,000 pieces of mail a year, probably. We, we do get a break from using our uh, data processing company. They use the sorted price, so it cuts off pretty significantly. Oh, good. Saves a lot of money. But yeah, postage is always going out. Mm -hmm. Any questions on this one? No. All right. No. Like that principle? Retirement of debt, 7100 uh, The top line, 5901 is principal payments on the school. Uh, the way that the bond payments are structured this year, there's a $100,000 higher 
payment due on the bond than there was last year. Um, next year it's going to go up 100000 again for a few years, and then it'll start coming back down. Was that just based on the amortization of that specific bond? Yeah, yeah. How many more years left? I just looked today, well, 2040 is when we pay it off. 2040? So we got 17 more years, yeah. There's about 19 million left on the, on the loan. Fifty nine eleven went down forty nine thousand. That was we paid off. I forget which project. Um, the ambulance wastewater study line is just a slight increase due to the way that that amortization schedule was drawn up. Um, t the Title Five line, one of our Title Five loans, got paid off last year. And the bands, I'm requesting a fifty thousand dollar increase. That's basically just to cover the transfer station payments, which we borrowed for for the first time in November. Um, after next year, we'll, we'll be paying off the traffic street light, which will free up about thirty-five thousand. So I, we might be able to bring it back down next year, depending how town meeting projects go this year. Okay. Any questions on this one? No. Looks good. The next is the interest on the long-term debt. And that overall went down 77000 and that's just a reflection of the lower principal requiring less interest to pay. Have any of the interest rates changed, or are these all fixed rates? Those are all fixed. The bonds, the long-term stuff is all fixed. Great. So, yeah, we locked those in before this current market. Okay. And short-term? And then this is where the interest rates are hitting us. So I went from 50 to 75,000 because the interest on the, that band that we took out in November went from 0.4% to 4%. Oh, wow. So I, where I had been able to allocate some money to pay off a little extra before, now it's about 65 to 70,000 in interest. So That's a huge 0.4 to 4%. Yeah, it went up 10 times this year over year. Wow. So we hit it right perfect the year before and then. Mm -hmm. But it still looks good overall when you look at the long-term debt and the short-term debt together. Yeah, we're pretty good. We haven't had uh, any huge projects. I think we got a few things coming up soon, mm -hmm. but right now we're we're okay. Nice. All right. Anything else for Scott? No. Looks right. good. Thank All you. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Chief. career. <laughs> <laughs> I knew there had to be somebody smiling. <laughs> <laughs> you look good. It was interesting. <laughs> yeah, interesting. All right, let's get on to business. <laughs> okay. I'm ready. All right, you would just want to go by the increase lines, basically, anything that's yes. yeah, increased. Like those. Yes, um, you know, the uh, permanent salary went up a little over 2% because we have about three, I think three individuals actually getting a step with it. So that's why that's up a little bit over 2%. Um, other salaries, um, other salaries has been covered in the dispatchers, the new dispatchers program that we tried to put together. We tried to fully fund that within the four years. We haven't been able to do that. Um, we're on year six now and we're still about five shifts a week short of full dispatching. So I added 10,000 that to try to get us to that point, but you'll see lower than that. I, I knocked out about 5,000 out of court. Um, the one good thing about COVID is, is court has been dwindling down. I imagine that's going to ratchet up at some point, but um, court costs have been way down as far as sending individuals to court. So I lowered that to try to make up a little bit on that 10,000. The electrical, they asked us to um, do a 5% increase. Um, mm -hmm. The vehicle maintenance, uh, my maintenance is going up. The fleet's getting a little older, and I'm never within budget on it. So next year, I would anticipate that going up a little bit. So that's why I added a little $1,500 to that. Um, gasoline, even with the increase I put here of 3000 I won't hit that number unless gas prices drastically go down. I don't foresee hitting the number this year. Even though I limited uh, a little bit of uh, officers on the road, 
you know, we doubled up a little bit over the summer because it was so expensive on um, gasoline plus they only went out if they needed to or <coughs> as a house officer that saved us about five thousand over the summer didn't affect anything as far as public safety or what have you gave them different projects during those times so um, if they needed the extra help they then could go out but as far as random patrolling I pulled back a little bit um, but still you this year I still won't hit the gasoline number so I added another really? three thousand to that uh, uniform and equipment and the training expense those both went up by six thousand dollars I anticipate at least at least two new hirings next year for retirements um, it cost about three thousand dollars to outfit somebody for the Academy so that's the six thousand dollars addition in there for two individuals and the training it's three thousand dollars to send them for the fee for the Academy um, so I'm just anticipating two new ones next year um, so those will those costs are coming from if we don't have those we'll have that money but I, I at least I think two mm -hmm. okay and the overall budget went to what is it 2.76 yeah. <coughs> so you're talking about two new hires to replace retirees do you need additional positions no I think we're doing pretty good now I think that you know, the the dispatcher program is helping us bring more people on the road for four we had officers at the desk so they'll only be you know so now without officers being assigned directly to the desk assigned to the house they can when we need be be on the road for the most part they are so we're we got additional people on the road just for the fact that they don't have to sit the desk in to the 911 calls great okay. it's run very efficiently we, well, and we try. effectively, which is more important. No, I mean, I think the dispatch program is definitely um, the way to go. Uh, they do a great job, yeah. you know, and I, I know a lot of chiefs, they have the mindset that uh, police officers do a better job on the desk. I don't have that same mindset. I think it's an individual. So regardless mm -hmm. whether a police or a dispatcher, you know, um, if they're good at what they do, it doesn't matter whether we're in uniform or not. Yeah. Great. And I have a new program that I'd like to start, and we can, on another day, talk about that, so that we keep our dispatchers. Because most of our dispatchers are part-time people. We don't pay a lot of money, and you don't really want to see a big turnover. Mm -hmm. um, so I have some ideas um, on how to keep them, but we'll, on another day we can speak about okay. that. Okay. Um, so that's that budget. Okay, uh, yeah, you want to do the canine? The animal, yeah, animal control is staying the same. Um, we pretty much stay within this budget. We've been lucky. Um, we have a contract with JM Pet for okay. kennel services. We guarantee them a hundred um, nights or um, automatic, whether we use four or whether we use a hundred. Um, it's the best deal in town. They do a great job, um, and we we've, we've always stayed within the budget. Last year, I think it was the closest we came, maybe like five or six hundred dollars. The short of um, of the eighty two fifty, so we'll leave it alone until the fact that we have to pay more, you know, uh, fees. But uh, I think I can hit that number. All right. That's Any other great. questions? Do you happen to know uh, off chance how many dogs are housed? I know you said one hundred is the minimum. What right. We, we pay a minimum fee for the hundred. Uh, most times we don't hit that number. Oh. Okay. Um, but unfortunately, two or three years ago, we did because a lot of people that. see that we make sure the dogs are taken care of. And we had uh, quite a few like strays left here, tied up here. Purposely. Purposely right. to, and we guarantee we do it to 10 nights. So they're, if we get a stray dog, they, it's 10 nights you know, by law. And then what JM Pet does is they take them in. Um, and because um, by law we're only responsible for 10 nights and they, they can euthanize them or, or have put them up for adoption and if they're in good shape um, physically they take them um, and readopt them oh that's great so and what we do is there's a fee to you know after 10 days that we're responsible to euthanize or put them in we if they take the dog we just give them the money that we would have gave them to euthanize so for them to keep them for a little while. So it's a really good mm -hmm. deal for That's the town, great. great for the animals. Um, so 
I wouldn't play too much with this <laughs> line because it's probably the best deal in town. Yep. Great, okay. thank you. Anything else? No. no All questions. right. Have thank a great you. night. Thank you, yep. Chief. Thank you, Chief. All right. We're ready for you, Tim. Hi, Tim. Good evening. How you doing? Hi. So, if you want to start off with the Contribution Commission. Well, congratulations. It's your first budget presentation. He bites, so watch out for him. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, if you just want to run through it, highlight any changes. No changes. Um, at this point, there's probably going to be a pretty good savings with staff salary, um, but everything else number wise is down so I'm not asking for anything in addition so that change is because it's being centralized is that right that is correct so um, as we had said earlier so we're going to be moving all of them under that consolidated budget and Tim has already done that in his budget so it's one less step off to a later date great any questions on this one None for me. All right. Open space. And that one, the Open Space Committee has asked for um, a little additional funding. Mainly it's for the Riverwalk event, the grant money oh. that they had received before they can't apply for again. It was a $4,000 grant. They've made up the difference with some donations and other money that has been pledged for services and things. But the $2,000 is to make up basically the difference that they haven't been able to fund. <coughs> Is that something the Multicultural Council could fund or contribute to? I don't know, just an off thought, maybe something it else. It would still be through their budget though, right? It would just be, it would just be yeah, in a different... Money yeah, coming that's one true. way instead of... That of going yeah. out. <laughs> We're still yeah. going to pay. <laughs> right, it's coming yeah. in from somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's true. But it, I mean, that's not much to ask for, so... No. So, I mean, that, that was their only ask. Otherwise, they had no other additional... Okay. No, I think it's a great event. Absolutely. Any other questions? No. Nope. All right. That's it. That's it. Thank Thanks you. Too. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. David, I'm assuming you're going to run through these ones? I am. So I'm going to go through them pretty quick as they're all level funded and they're all small amounts. And I'll just call off the numbers and if you have any questions, let me know. The Agricultural Commission will be level funded at 600. Women's Place Crisis Center will be level funded at $2,750. BARC will be level funded at $250. Old Colony Hospice Care is being level funded at $2,000. And Plymouth County Extension Service is being level funded at $200. Any questions on these? No. No. Okay. Public comment period. Anyone have anything? I attended the Massachusetts Municipal Association meeting um, Friday and Saturday. I thought it was fantastic. It was, I was really surprised at the number of women that were involved. I don't know if it's just from the industry that I'm in where that's mostly male. I was just overwhelmed at how accepting and nice and welcoming that everybody was. It was, I learned a lot about different programs, different different options to look at. We heard, a heard from a lot of speakers, and it seems as though the state is really pushing the housing, which you guys all yeah, know. Yeah, they are. Mm -hmm. um, and they weren't really talk. They're supposedly going to help fund infrastructure changes with that, but they didn't get into details on where any money was coming from. But it was clear between the mayor, the attorney general, uh, I'm not, what is she now? The governor and the district governor, they were really talking about housing and how every town has to do their part and just take in a little bit more which not everybody was happy to hear so no no talk about any relief with 40b or the oh gosh no no relief so there's my good news sorry i meant to say, <laughs> i meant to say it in a good way that it was really uh, empowering and enlightening um but that i also learned some stuff good awesome it was great all right Report. Sure, so thank you. So a whole bunch of FYIs, and then we'll finish on, on um, uh, the 200th anniversary discussion. 
So just an FYI, again, for our police accreditation process, you may recall three years ago we were accredited for the first time, which is the highest level that you can re receive in the state of Massachusetts. Um, you'll also may recall at the last meeting that I had provided kudos to the, to the police department because we had passed an insurance audit um, uh, as a result of all the policies that they currently do that they did through the accreditation process. So um, it just shows, and I want the town to know, that we just have a 21st century police department that takes uh, current policing po uh, policies very seriously. Um, the accreditation will happen at the end of February, and then we'll hear from the state a couple of months afterwards, and hopefully we'll be reaccredited. And again, I just want to give credit to the police chief and specifically also to the deputy, uh, Tim Nixon. They've both done a really good job and showed a lot of leadership on this. Uh, next one is an FYI about complete streets. So again, I want to give a lot of credit to our DPW director, Chris Santelli. He applied for this. It's a lot of work. You have to compile a lot of information. But he got a proof of $500,000. Mm -hmm. um, and so we will be targeting River Street with, uh, the, with sidewalks. Again, we're going to continue doing everything we can to add more and more sidewalks to this town and make it our primary focus. So you recall that two years ago, through a grant, Chris was able to do a sidewalk from the center of town down to the park, and now we're gonna do the park as far down River Street as we can possibly go. It is a little bit more expensive because we have some wetland areas we have to contend with and do some additional flagging. But again, you know, a lot of credit to Chris and, and what he did. Um, next is, is an FYI on the National Grid LED installation process. You, again, you may recall at the beginning of last year we started this process. Uh, they said it would be about July that they would be start to install the street lights. They are now 80% done. Great. Um, so once it triggers 80%, I signed the memo earlier this week, and they will release 80% of the funds to us because there was two components to this. One is a long-term savings because there should be electri less electricity use. Um, and the second is, is that there was a one-time upfront lump sum payment from making the change. It totaled $40,000, so at 80%, we're going to receive about $32,000 in. When they complete the additional 20%, we're we'll receiving the additional eight grand. Again, I think that's pretty good news. I will say on our LED street lights, we do anticipate that to come down, but we've been going over. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to level fund it this year, get a full year mm -hmm. in to see what our savings is, and then we'll adjust from there. But I think it's all good news. If I could just slide something in there, David, because you, because you mentioned National Grid, there were some complaints about streetlights being out. I called National Grid about um, the streetlights at Market Basket and the streetlight in front of my house, which has been out for a while. And I really didn't care. It was kind of nice because it didn't shine in the house, but um, it was helpful too when it gets dark early. They were. Um, they were on my, they said, you know, where I was located was easier to address because they didn't need to get a police um, uh, detail out there, but at Market Basket they would. So they were on my street within a week. And I, I think the Market Basket street lights are resolved. I'm not sure. Um, I haven't driven, driven down there, but they were very receptive. You just call them, give them the address or as close to an address as you can get. You don't have to have the poll number. They prefer the poll number, but they're not asking for anyone to go out and park their car on the road and try to get a poll number. An address is perfectly fine with them. Good, good, excellent. Um, then this was brought up at the last meeting, um, but I, I, I gave all the correct information, but I will have to verify. So, um, so yes, the, uh, we did receive an ADA approval for a transition grant. Again, I want to give Deb Colley a lot of credit. She's the chair of the ADA committee. Um, this is so that way we can do a self-evaluation town audit of all of our buildings to determine what does comply with ADA and what does not. Because most of our buildings predate the passage of ADA, it's not like we're illegally in, not in compliant. But if we can get grant funding and we can make changes going forward so we can make sure that we're more accessible, we should do that. So again, good job on Deb's part. And also I spoke to OCPC earlier this week. Uh, we need to hire a consultant in order to do this and they have agreed to take it on. So we will take the funding from the state, we'll be able to pay them. They already know us, we know them. It should be a really good fit. Um, 
the ADA coordinator was here last time and she did say that she was concerned that the money has to be spent by the end of June, which is true. I have confirmed that with, with the state. So again, my conversations with OCPC, they know they have to do it, they have to do it pretty quick, but they feel like they'll be able to do so. Mm -hmm. um, and the last FYI is um, FEMA reimbursement. So January of 2022, you may remember last year that we got hit with a pretty sizable snowstorm. Um, and as a result, we incurred a lot of overtime expense. Uh, the governor, Charlie Rook, declared, I'm sorry, Charlie Rook, um, <laughs> Charlie Baker, um, he, um, um, he declared a state of emergency, which allowed us to be able to apply for FEMA reimbursement. Um, and I want to say a lot of credit goes to Sue Kent and to Linda Torres. Um, when people say that there's a lot of federal grants, that is true. And when they say that it is the most bureaucratic red tape process you'll ever encounter, that is also true. So um, here it is, think about it, it's a year later. But um, we have just received our approval and we will receive $75,000 back from the federal government for reimbursement of overtime expenses. So again, I wanna say thank you to those two. Couldn't have done it without them. Um, and the last is our 200th anniversary is coming to an end. Uh, I think we've had a fantastic year and we've done a lot. But you know, when you look back, you don't always ne necessarily remember what everybody did. Um, and so with that said, I met with Jerry Lawrence, who was the chair of the 200th anniversary. Uh, with your permission uh, and approval, a couple of months ago, we discussed about doing a time capsule. And so I have placed this on the agenda because I really think it should be the Board of Selectmen's decision as to where we put it and what date we open it. And so first, um, I will tell you what our recommendation is, and then I will ask you for whatever you want to consider to do. Uh, what we would like to do is that we would like to place a time capsule at the Historical Museum, right behind the town hall, is a strip of grass area there. Uh, we envision that the DPW department would open up a hole um, and we would bury it there. We think that it fits into the vein of the fact that this is one of the older buildings in town. It's certainly your oldest municipal building. You have your historical barn or historical museum there. We think it's the right place for it. Um, and what we would do is on February 15th, our recommendation is, is that we would have all department heads who held um, some type of a special event, we would ask them to be here. And then they would put together a quick little one-page synopsis or report of what they did. So, for example, um, you know, when the DPW department did a touch a truck, you know, what date was that? Who was there? What happened? So I would envision that the department head would be here, would come up, and they would tell the board the date and what they did, and it was a positive event, and they will take their report and they'll put in the time capsule. And then we have all the other department heads do the exact same thing. Um, I will handle, I will have, I would request that Jerry Lawrence as chair of the 200 would start us off because he did the first event emceeing February 16th last year at the church. Um, and he would turn in his report. I'll turn in a report for field day, um, which again, I think was a fantastic event. Um, so we will turn all those reports in really to you, but into the time capsule. And we envision that a memo or a letter would be from this board to either that future board and or its residents 50 years from now and whatever you want to say and then it's a question do you, in a, you know and again it's up to you do you each do an individual letter excuse me or do you do a letter as a board to the future board and its residents um, and so I'll throw that out in a moment and ask you guys to let you know to tell us what you would prefer to do um, the idea is, is that we would place everything in the time capsule. We'll put other items in there as well. For example, the list of persons book that we do every single year, we'll place that in. The 200th anniversary pin, uh, we'll put that in. Um, and we have a handful of other little knickknacks and items that we're gonna place in as well. Um, and along with your memo. We would then move the meeting, and hopefully it's not snowing and cold and all those things. Um, but we'll move the meeting from there downstairs. The board can carry the capsule down and we'll place the capsule into the hole and we'll have DPW there with a backhoe and then lift um, the soil back on and place the uh, stone back on. And on that note, I want to give um, a very nice and warm thank you to Mark McLeod. Um, I've spoken to him this earlier this week. He will donate a piece of granite slab that we will use as the stone. Um, so we hope they'll, he'll donate it, they'll put the stone piece down. 
Um, and then we will engrave on that the year to open. So it will say something like open on such and such date. We're going to propose February 16th, 2072, which would be the 250th anniversary or 50 years from now or 50 years from um, from then when it was our 200th. Um, and, um, and that way people will know in 50 years what to do. <laughs> they won't be, you know, because right now I'm told we have a time capsule <laughs> somewhere in town that no one knows when to open it or where it is. <laughs> so if we, mm -hmm. if we place it there in the historical area with the address, on, with the date on it to open at that time, and we're recommending 50 years because Denise, unfortunately you and I are in this category, we probably won't be I here won't in 50 years, <laughs> but Anthony and Mary are young enough where you and your families may be here in 50 years. And I think it would be really, really neat to see, like, you know, maybe Anthony has both arms at that point. Um, <laughs> and, um, maybe. And, um, but, you know, if you had great grandkids or grandkids, or you have great grandkids and your grandkids, or maybe, mm -hmm. you know, one of your family members, another selectman or whatever. Right. And, and, right. Um, and it might be really nice in 50 years. But if you want to do 100 or 200 or 300 or whatever, it's your choice. Um, but I can guarantee you if you do it further, none of you will be here. So, um, so 50 years, I might have a chance at 110, but anything <laughs> beyond that. I know. <laughs> so oh, wow. if, um, if you yeah. like that idea, that is the only thing on the agenda. Um, that's why we start budgets this year in January, because we had to make up for that time. Um, so um, if you like that idea, that's what we'll do. Um, and then um, I would just ask that you do take a vote or at least give me, you know, technical direction that placing it on that property is the correct place because you it's, the land is yours as the selectman. Um, and the second is, is do you want to do 50 years or whatever, a different date? And the last is the memo, if you like that idea, is it individually written or is it from a board to everybody else? What time would we be doing this at? So it would be same time, 6.30. Should we bump it up? Maybe five o'clock. Fine with me. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah. You know, February fifteenth. Not as cold, not as dark. Uh, yeah. Actually, if it, if it, it'll actually still be a little light out. Yeah. Right. That's what I was thinking. We could watch a sunset. <laughs> we could. We could. We could hold hands yeah. and sing yeah. "Kumbaya." Yeah, I do, yeah. but I don't see that so, happening. <laughs> so maybe move the meeting up till five o'clock that night. Yeah, whatever you prefer. Okay. Um, I think individual letters would just be easier. I think so too. Um, yeah. I just. Yep. And That's fine. I think 50 years makes sense. Yeah, I really too. like the 50 years idea. Um, and I'm going to make sure my kids know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it might make sense to have some involvement from the historic commission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I agree. They um they did something I. I I know they sent me some information they were doing in reference to the Drury Bell. So I'm hoping that that'll be one of the reports and they'll be able to explain that as well at that time. Cool. Maybe a, a, a student letter from each school might be interesting. Yep. I'll, um, what we did is, is that um, Jerry has told me that the last year, the class of 2022 took a class picture all with the pins on. So oh, again, okay. I want to make uh, sure that you were all acceptable right. of that. But with your approval tonight, I'm going to reach out to Mark and get a picture of that and place that in. Because again, okay. they're 17 years old. Oh right. my God. In 50 years. <laughs> um, yeah, a year yeah. book. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. absolutely. Right. They want to yeah. include a, some sort of letter about what they anticipate life will be like when they open this 50 years later. Maybe the class here? president yeah. might write something? Yeah, uh, we'll find out because the class of 2022 has graduated, so wherever they are now, we'll have to track them down. Okay. Uh, but yes, I think it's a great idea. We'll just, just got to try to make it happen. And I'll read yeah. it 50 years from now. <laughs> <laughs> I think what's going to be funny is that 50 years from now, they're going to read it and the, what, how the prose will be different. You know, we call it Old English. Mm -hmm. We'll be Old English. Um, is to have whatever. I'm not planning to get old. I don't know what your plans are. <laughs> I'm already there. <laughs> um, so I have captured individual letters. Mm -hmm. um, I have okay. captured 50 years. I've captured 5 p.m. And I want to just make sure that you're okay that we do it on that piece of property there adjacent to the Historical Society. Okay. 
Is it visible? Will you be able to see it when you walk by? And yeah. no. Oh, good. That's a okay. Process. All right. Is Sounds good. To that effect? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Okay. With that being all, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned.